All right. Appointments Committee, September 25th, 2024. This meeting is being recorded and will be broadcast on the Town of Bonsville Government Access Channel in accordance with Massachusetts General Law, Chapters 38, Section 20. The Chair must inquire while in, whether anyone else is recording this meeting, and if so, please make your presence known. Okay, Mr. King. Hi. How are you doing? Do roll call first. Oh, oh sorry. Trying to rush. Councilors, Mendez. Present. Clark. Here. Turkelson. Here. Bloom. Verdict. Present. You have quorum. Mm -hmm. Mr. King, have you sat a seat? Uh -uh. Um, I, oh, you're hot. Better off here. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Poor guy just had surgery. Well, thank you for coming. Oh, yeah. and it shows dedication. Yeah, that's thank for sure. So, Councilor Clark. Uh, thank you very much for your interest in the housing committee. Uh, uh, airport. Airport. Sorry. Airport. Chris Beach. No, no, King. Chris King. Chris Beach is being rescheduled. Oh, Chris oh I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Thank you, Mike. Thank you for your dedication for your um, uh, lovely um, um, application here. Uh, and thank you for your interest in our town housing community. It's a Airport. big issue. Airport. We're doing it. I know. So this is not in here. So, hmm? yeah, yeah. Mr. King's stuff is not. Oh, it should be. Oh. House of Jarvis. Can we just do this one sec? Yeah, well, we, we can just start. Tell us a little bit about yourself. There you apparently, go. your information <laughs> is not in here, which is why we're all confused. Yeah. Okay. So tell us, other than surgery, tell us about no, yourself. No, no. I thank you very much for allowing me to be here with, uh, with my, my, uh, my aid, my Plus walking aid. <laughs> I live in Osterville. We've, uh, my wife and I moved down from western suburbs of Boston four years ago. So we came in just as the pandemic started. And uh, it was easier to work from home here than it was to work from home then. And uh, we've been living here and planning to retire here uh, on the Cape. Um, and uh, I've been living here since uh, for four years. I've, four years? I've, Four years. Four years. And uh, have uh, always been interested in, uh, uh, you know, volunteering, being more involved with the area that I live in. I've never had an opportunity to do that except for one, um, uh, one, or one organization that I, I work for as, uh, it was a nonprofit organization where I worked um, in, in the board, um, in the finance, as well as the president of that board, um, uh, back a while. But in the in the town, I would really like to get more involved with the town and understand uh, uh, how I can uh, support and um, utilize uh, some of my expertise and logical background, logic background, and uh, and support. Um, um, whatever is uh, needed to be supported from an uh, organization standpoint. Okay. Um, I, I, I'm sorry, one last one. Yeah. Is I, I attended the Citizens Leadership uh, Program, and because of that, I was able to, to see you know, where are all the different um, uh, areas where someone like myself could uh, apply uh, my capabilities and uh, with my job over the years. I've uh, spent a lot of time in airports. And so uh, that was the one area that has really interested me. And so uh, that's why I'm putting the application on the commission. Thank you very much. And yes. That you went to Ransom Air Polytech? Yes. Speaks volumes on its own. And that you're willing, and that you spent the time going to the citizen leadership academy. Those another investment in our community. That speaks volumes. Um, so I'm going to yeah, uh, step up. And um, uh, what made you, uh, other than spend time at time at airports and your travel time, how how do you think you can contribute to your airport commission? So. Um, 
there is an interest. I, I'm, I'm never going to be a pilot. I'm never going to fly. But I have the interest in uh, aviation as more of a, uh, a side interest. Uh, and you're looking at the facilities that we have here in Barnstable. Uh, they are small, but uh, great in terms of its capabilities. And I wanted to be involved with uh, the airport to see um, how it can grow and to be able to support that. Uh, that's my great, great interest is uh, what is the, um, the long-term capability of, it, of an airport like uh, Barnstable. Now, if you were not selected for the airport commission, would you still be uh, interested in attending those meetings and participating? Uh, yeah, sure. And uh, of course, um, I think um, if, I, um, if I wasn't selected in this round, uh, I would assume that uh, positions would continually become available. And so uh, I wouldn't want, just be, just if I wasn't selected in this round, uh, although I would love to be, um, uh, I would still uh, continue to pursue a position in the future. And, um, you know, I, I think that uh, if if I wasn't selected, I would probably be uh, less active than if I was selected. Selected, but that would only be because I'd be looking at other things that would be interesting, interested to me, and you know, keep myself busy for my state. Sure. Uh, given that we have about more than forty-three committees in our town, that uh, that we can't anticipate when there's going to be a uh, future vacancy. So there are some unanticipated vacancies due to illness or death or move. Uh, you know. So uh, that's why I say, if you're interested in this, in this um, uh, field of um, uh, participation for the town, that, um, that midterm some um, opportunity may emerge and um, you would be well positioned to do so. Yeah, I agree. And um, you know, my my background is electrical engineering, and I spent uh, many years in uh, business. Um, I own a small business now, but it's uh, it's just for um, me and a couple of uh, uh, working buddies that I have that need someone from my expertise to be able to help them out. So that's uh, that's why I have a small business, but. Um, basically retired from uh, full-time uh, work. And um, the, uh, the areas that, I, that interest me the most is anything that has to do with uh, technology. And uh, of course, aeronautics is heavily in the technology area. Another area within uh, uh, Barnesville is the DPW. You, know, you wouldn't think the DPW has a, a high level of technology, but it does. And I think that um, my interest would lie more towards the airport commission, mainly because of the uh, infrastructure that's there. Uh, and the uh, DPW tends to be a little bit more broader, a broad um, capability or requirements. And so, uh, Thank you for setting up. And what did you find, find most valuable from the citizens' leadership again? Oh, uh, it, uh, it was just a, an eye opening information gathering and information. Uh, sometimes it was a little bit of an overload, but it was uh, a way to. Uh, listen to each of the departments and then be able to ask questions. And uh, what was eye-opening for me was uh, how uh, the quality of individuals that we have within this town that are running the town. And uh, in each of the departments, there are uh, very high-level quality individuals that are uh, uh, that are actively running their uh, jobs and doing a fine job. So I, I would say, you know, 
I don't I don't want to sound you know uh, hubris, but I was impressed. And um, right to right to Lisa, right. right. Right, and you know, and I mean, I should be impressed. I mean, they were they, these individuals are um, lifelong individuals within their own uh, areas, whether it be in uh, law or um, you know, police or fire or uh, DPW as engineers. So that I was talking with the engineers and, and was having a really good discussion with them and. Uh, the report commission. I'm very, um, very impressed with the organization and the infrastructure that's there. Thank you. I think you covered most of everything that I would ask. Okay. I would ask briefly though some of the highlights of your <clears throat> your professional career. Yeah. And just the for that I just see that I know what you're in. So I I travel I. I was working for 40 years or so in the semiconductor industry, and my um, my background, my my role in the semiconductor industry, uh, traveled from engineering into marketing, um, engineering, engineering management, marketing, marketing management, and then uh, this was all on the West Coast or in Texas, and uh, and then. Due to a move a requirement or a need to move to the Northeast, really because of a family need, I uh, moved into a position of sales. And I've been in sales for about 25, 30 years, and always um, uh, selling either electronics to major corporations or uh, subtle selling components to major corporations. Uh, the value that I've gained in that area is that you see a lot. You see a lot of different applications that are utilizing the products that you sell. And as part of in sales, which is more of a consultative sales individual, you try to help the individual see the utilization of the products within their product. And then as doing so, I have to learn about how they're utilizing the product and what they're you know, end goal is for that product. The value. The value, right. Very good. Thank you. Um, just a couple of quick questions. Um, the nonprofit, you, were, you, you said you were on a financial board? I was um, part of a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, um, I'm going to forget because yeah. <laughs> I, I, I wrote it down. No, 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 no. Male Survivor is the name of the nonprofit. Yeah. And it's uh, set up for hope, healing, and support for men. Okay. For men that have been abused. Okay. And um, uh, I was uh, on the board okay. uh, as a board member. And then quickly, um, mainly, mainly because of my engineering background, they asked me to do the finance. And I, so I was the treasurer. And I did that for two years. And then I was. Uh, promoted to the president of the board for two years, and we have a two-year um, requirement for the board. Uh, also, being on the board, I was able to um, make connections with uh, two professors, one, one professor out of Yale and one professor out of Novi Southeast College down in Florida. They were doing a, um, a study utilizing Procori a recorded grant out of Washington, and they needed somebody on the advisory board. And so I was asked to be on their advisory board. And, you know, we met once a month, once every other month, and the advisory board was really to give them, what I ended up giving them is, is help and direction or guidance with marketing. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, because I'll tell you why I said it. If not selected for this, we have a committee, a committee called CPAC, and because of your background in finances, engineering background, sales background, um, if we don't mind taking a look at it and see if that'd be something you'd be interested in. What's the name? CPAC, uh, okay. Conference of Financial Advisory Committee. Okay. Okay. I might have missed that. <laughs> I might have missed that. Yeah. One, I, uh, I mean, you yeah. have a background for it. It, it, it's on the list here, um, okay. but, but it is it is a very valuable and um, um, uh, important. It's a, it's a committee that the 
council and the town relies on for um, advice uh, regarding finances, especially, you know, important things going forward uh, regarding um, our operating finances and our comprehensive. Um, um, yeah. Well, we were we were so, always scratching for money good. as the nonprofit, and uh, yeah. you know, it was, thank you, yeah. thank you very much. Okay. Anything else? All thank right, you. that's thank it. You. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank Come you. Over. Thank you for coming out of your way and, and doing it the hard way. That's okay. Thank you for coming. Yes, thank you. No need to. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. I'm going to um, take the elevator. The PT is my next day. Oh. Next okay. appointment, so. But thank you very much. Thank you for making the time for us. And thank you for stepping up. This is what we rely on. Um, well, I live in the town. And, you know, Barnstable is a fantastic town. And I want to be a part of that. We, we rely on people like you to help us make the decisions. Thank you. Thank you. Margaret Bailo. Did I pronounce it right? Usually it's Marguerite or both pieces of it. Wow, look at that. The possible high school education. There you go. Thank you. Kristen. Yes. That's where you volunteer. Yes, that's right. I knew you were. Yeah. Also, Clark. So tell us how, how you would um, contribute to the airport commission, please. Okay. Um, actually, I was a commissioner before. Oh, you yeah. were? Yes. Before I was recruited by Roy Richardson. I just finished a project in the town of the Stanley Mark over by the airport and then been the point person. And, getting the bonds done and everything else. And mm -hmm. so um, we were like one of the fastest stream bond applications that they'd ever experienced. Mm -hmm. So um, I gave you a call one day and I said, hey, Margaret, you know, because I never knew him until like the process. Mm -hmm. so it was, it was a pretty that painful that process. But, that was quite a while ago. Yeah, it was, it was in 2000. Let me see. So I started, I came to mission 920-2001, yeah, officially. But I had actually taken over a term for somebody. He says, Margaret, can you just consider a term of three months? That was like mm -hmm. in yeah. July. Yeah. And I said, yeah. I said, I'm sure this is a non-compensated position. <laughs> yeah. And he said, yes. And I said, well, I travel a lot, so let me check it out. And I talked to Mike Dunn, who at the time was the chairman. And I said, well, okay, I can, I can probably do it for the three months. And then um, I got voted in without my presence for another term. And then 9 11 happened, and then all that stuff. And then we went through the whole uh, redesign of the airport and all my other, all, all those other affiliated things. So now that I've retired, um, and I did the citizens, I, know, I, just, I didn't know what to do. But um, I did do the Citizens Leadership Academy way back when um, I was commissioned. And then now that I've retired and I have the only airport experience that I had is like so much joy was that I used to. And <laughs> so um, I decided to sign up for the, the police academy, Citizen Police Academy, because I wanted to do it at that time, but I knew I couldn't give uh, what, 13 weeks it was or whatever. So now I was able to complete that. And as a result of that, I started volunteering over at the police station. So I I am over there every Friday afternoon to do that. And then I was reading the town newsletter and I saw that they were going through this long-term strategic planning thing. And I contacted them and said they would be willing to and start the, the airport. airport. Mm -hmm. And it's a four week, it's turned out to be like a six or eight week lifetime span, but it's actually four sessions to um, 
to join in the, the long-term strategic planning by doing the mission statement and the vision statement and the philosophy for the airport going forward. Next Monday will be our last day. And so when I first came here, there were a lot of people that uh, at the airport that still work here that we don't work here, you know, thinking about maybe coming back because there's a thing I said, well, I already have a little part-time job. She goes, oh, not in the office, on the, on the commission. So you said that you started with the three month term. Yeah. And then how long in total were you on that? I was there, I left at the end of my final term, and that was in 2005. And um, so the long term planning that you've been involved with, they just invited you to come as a no. person who knows, or no, it was just something that was in your town newsletter. So I stepped out and in the yeah, mm -hmm. newsletter, and I saw that and I said, Oh, okay, let me check that out because I always had a nice relationship with the airport back to the time when I could just actually call the tower and ask if a plane was coming in. Or they just tell me to come up into the tower and sit there until the plane came in and stuff like that. So things have really changed. <laughs> but um, so I signed up for that and um, got to know Katie, who's my daughter. Okay, well, I'll check it out and see if there's, if there's a spot for me. You retired from well, I, was, I retired I did in property management, but I was um, I don't know if you remember Pat James the support system. Mm -hmm. Well I started with the secretary and ended up as director of administration and handling all the international marketing and also the plant expansion at the end of that runway. And then I went into construction and development and worked with the federal and local governments and a couple of different states to get special permitting. I was able to get permitting for a um, development in Yarmouth for some um, affordable housing that they've been struggling getting a permit with for three years. So in about six months, I just kind of attacked it and we were able to get the permit through the state and everything. So I've kind of been all, I've been really curious in everything I've done. So it's kind of led me down different paths, and unexpected paths in a lot of cases and stuff. And I was on acquisition teams for new companies and stuff like that. And I was hired by an Austrian company to evaluate their new factory in New Hampshire. So I kind of went to, through there and identified new business streams and went back and forth from there to Austria. And which was nice because it, the Austrian company was an hour and a half from my grandmother's house in Germany. So I could just get on a train and on the train. So very interesting. Actually, my professor in college told me I should, but uh, yeah. sounds like you should. You have to be a children's tale. <laughs> well, I don't know what I want to ask. That's always a question that I ask myself because <laughs> everybody has a good presentation. I mean, it doesn't take a lot of questions really to get all the information out, but what I'm curious about is how you pronounce your last name exactly. Mayla. Mayla. But down in New Orleans, where my dad's family's from, you know, Margaret, who you pronounce it correctly, it's Mayo. <laughs> Mayo, <laughs> that's what I was thinking. Is it French? Then? It was French, and they stuffed the, um, they dropped the E, A, D, X, C. That's interesting. And are you trilingual? I was I was <laughs> until I came to the States, because I only spoke German, and then we moved to France. And my classes were half in English and half in German. Of course, my father spoke English, so I knew English right. like that part. And then, so in in the schools of the military schools over there, you always had French every year. So at that point, and German from 
French classes here, and I can remember it was like nails on a chalkboard. <laughs> <laughs> but when I'm away from it, it's hard. But once once I get taken, when I was traveling over there, setting up um, setting up shows and stuff like that, first couple of days, it would be English and German, and then be there for so long that I started dreaming in German. And then when I came back. <laughs> To work at the, co the company here, I'd have to translate German into English in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> but I slept it. <laughs> but yeah, so that's, I mean, those are the kind of questions that I like to ask. I'm just curious though, so having now participated or having been involved in the, I want to make sure my phone's on But um, having participated in the planning or in the administration of the airport. 25 years ago almost, and now participating in the long term planning process today. What, how do you feel about the direction of the airport? And what do you think about how would you compare the airport of yesteryear, meaning that to now? How do you, how, how were the material differences and challenges? Well, it's become absolutely more sophisticated. Yeah. Okay. And um, the technology, like even Chris addressed before me and stuff like that, and just the infrastructure itself. And it seems to, it was a little bit more, I, I don't like to use the word wild when it first started, but that was when we were bringing in the red trips and we were doing the design and we were having, I survived the public meetings about the airport design <laughs> and stuff like that. And people saying, well, make all the big planes go to Otis and we can only have the small planes come here. So I think just the level of the services that are there, and I mean, we didn't have a TSA really. And the building itself is much more conducive to travel and to meet the services, but they're constantly striving to improve, and that's what this whole this whole exercise is for. They're they're uh, redefining the mission statement to more fit what the future and past and melding it all together, and then the vision itself, the next part of it, and then the philosophy of the airport, which tells you how you want wanted to proceed and how we're going to get there and things like that. So it's, I mean, it's amazing to see what the airport was when I left right. at the commissioner to see what it is now. And I went, I was invited to the, um, the dedication and the opening of the and stuff like that. It was, it was um, I guess, rewarding when you put oh, the work into things. It's it 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 evolved over the years. Just like a silly little thing, like I, my friend and, and I started the Christmas parade in Nashville. Oh, which is great fun. Oh, yeah. Now it's <laughs> called the uh, Great of Illumination or something. It's yeah. been going on for 15 years because I promised the town that we tried to get free publicity when you start up something and we see money and stuff like that. I remember talking to the editor of the Enterprise and I said, I want to call it the first annual Christmas parade. And she said, Oh, that's not, you know, you can't really publish it that way and stuff like that. And I said, Well, I tell you what. There will be a second annual, even if it's just me and Kevin walking down the street. <laughs> Illuminated. <laughs> so, so we promised to do it for three years, and then we turned it over to um, to the Chamber of Commerce. And, and, well, I guess they only missed uh, oh, during, during COVID. You know, so it's kind of nice to have that. And see, that's still going along. Well, thank you. That's all I have to say for answer. Um, let me ask you, would you be interested in serving on, it, serving on any other boards or commissions if we didn't get on this one? I don't know what I would, uh, I'd have to look at the list. I guess my heart's in that, in the airport right now. Yeah, so, but, but the, the only reason why I say, again, your background, you're perfect to see that. <laughs> you just are. The banking, the acquisitions, and you're a beast with the bond stuff. But that's you got to remember that's a long that's 20 years ago. Yeah, the world, the, world the world has changed. Yeah. The world has changed. But um, <laughs> and when I say that doesn't mean that you're not going to get on this. I'm just saying, yeah, no. you know, if if in fact sure, you're I gonna, do like to look at. if you want to look at CFAC because you, you have obviously the requisite experience and um, you're a perfect fit for that. And you have to. So, you know. But my heart is at the airport. Yeah, <laughs> the same. Yeah, you definitely qualify for that too. But, 
Uh, no questions for me, so that's really about it. Thank you so much for coming in. And I just want to say um, that if you served on the airport commission 20 years ago and that they look to call you back, they must, must find your input of value. I, I hope so. <laughs> no, I, I see that your investment from some time ago was best kept. Yeah, forward. it was. And I, I was brought up with uh, a father that always said, you know, you give back to the community. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's several more than one. Thank you, my boy. Thank you very much. Nice to see you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming You're in. You're welcome. Thank you. Nice to see you. And are you Cynthia? I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry for that like crazy. Email. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. Uh, take care, folks. Thank see you so much for coming in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on down. I have a question. When you spoke with the decision, you know, have any idea? I was. <laughs> Probably go to Mississippi mm -hmm. because we have to go through all that. Yes. Okay. I was just curious. Mm -hmm. Maybe next time. Mm -hmm. One thing at a time. So. <laughs> 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 nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. We met. I know. It's just beautiful. Oh, I'll get out. You. We can do it. <laughs> Well, I'll begin by saying I am not someone that should go on that committee. Just is not my value. I'm going to try to sell you two in a minute. Please, not on that one. Council Burdick. Can you start with me? Start with you. Okay, great. All right. So just tell us. I'm curious about. I don't have your CV here. Okay. Just a. Oh, I guess. Even if I have it. Okay. So, <laughs> just tell me a little bit about well, your professional life. And, and I uh, grew up in New Hampshire in a very, very small town of 600 and uh, watched my father be a selectman and my mother be on the school board. Mm. It was always, you know, you, you do in well. your community. And uh, after college, I taught elementary school for five or six years and then adopted two children. And my Noted, or my former husband didn't like me in the past. Let's just put it that way. And I, I remarried to someone who was an Air Force officer. So after that, I did not teach because we moved every two years mm -hmm. with nine moves and three children. And we're always involved in uh, taking care of the community. But then 20 years ago, he retired and uh, we built a house in Barnstable Village. I uh, have been very happy here. We're uh, very involved with St. Mary's. Both of us are involved with Habitat, the community. We sing in the Cape Cod Corral. Uh, try to be idle part of the community. Yes. But the community is good to us. So we need to be peaceful. But my career was Great. short until I was <laughs> queen of the volunteers. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's interesting. How many? So 18 different bases? You were nine bases. Or nine nine bases. moves. Over a 20 plus year career. 27. Any place fun? England. The best. Yes. yes. For how many years? Yes. And all your, kid, your kids obviously were with you. Oh, yes. They were with you. That's interesting. And you're all grown up now. Yeah, they're all in their 40s. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. That's that, my question. Got it out of the way. Good. <laughs> <laughs> See, I told you I wasn't good for that one. <laughs> <laughs> and it sounds like you're already. Very involved, which is great. Why? Um, what interests you about the cultural council in particular? Well, I know it's not CPAC, but no. <laughs> two people on the council asked me if I would be interested. They would have needed another one or two, or I don't know how many. And uh, I sing with the two of them in the church choir, and uh, they said you'd be good at this. So I, I didn't go looking online or anything for it. It came to me. It came to me. Right. That's a good way of coming to into um uh, into uh, engaging in our town. Um, and I did take that citizens academy. Oh, and that person that was close to twenty years ago. We took a tour there. It's a very good program. A lot of people have come to that, and it takes a while for some people to find their fit. But the cultural council is a 
it's an interesting niche because it does have the power to allocate funds right. to um, to uh, cultural um, um, uh, values. So I appreciate that, and that people reached out to you, and that you have had this um, network in the community that speaks volumes. Um, I'm not going to take his, his question. <laughs> <laughs> No, you can take any question. <laughs> but uh, but because you were uh, you were recruited by um, by people who are already on the committee, like I said, that speaks volumes, and that you have immersed yourself in the community and you're aware of the cultural benefits of um, of our community. Um, I, I I welcome you to volunteer and, and enhance our community. Thank you. You're great. Perfect for this committee. There's uh, something that you have to allocate money. That's kind of like super. Yeah. <laughs> a mini okay. super. Yeah, she's, she's a trouble. <laughs> no, that, that's, you know, you know, I love your resume and you know, I really have no questions. I was a trustee of the Sturgis Library for nine years. So you know about numbers. I know about numbers and stuff, yes. Uh -huh. And I bet you can and make some neat chocolate chip cookies. I can. I, 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 I can always tell. I have. <laughs> thank you so much for oh, coming. Oh, thank in. you for having me. Thank you. Because we can all reach. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for making it home. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. Have a good evening. Thank you so much for spending all of this. Um, yeah, I don't know where my head was at with the other two applications. Sorry about that. Go on vacation. <laughs> no, I, I haven't taken one. That's the problem. <laughs> All right, I'll go next week. Um, questions that we've asked. Um, we have four. Are you ready to vote on these? Because Margaret's been asking. I don't know how I already asked this one. I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Given that Margaret has had experience with the um, airport commission before, and that Colteen's um, resume shows depth in being um, applicable to another community, uh, another committee, as you suggested, um, I'm going to recommend Margaret. How many spots are on the airport commission right now? One. And we have Tom Coyle, Mike Curtis. Margaret and Mr. Chris. The Rob King. I mean, if you guys feel more comfortable hearing everybody else out, that's fine with me. I was just. But no, we already did. You already did. You all these people. people. We already did Mike Curtis. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. That's what I mean. Yeah. I have to look back on that. <clears throat> but I mean, her app, to me, her application, clearly, it sticks out of my mind. I'm, I'm comfortable with it. If the majority of us are comfortable with it, we can vote on her today. That's fine. I don't mind. Uh, Tom Coyle, I'm trying to remember. Tom Coyle was in we the We placed Army. him on the Council on Aging. He was the aviator? The he older was, gentleman? Yeah, he was in the... Yep. He was a pilot, and he, but he yeah. also did business startups. He had a long... Right, I remember. He could have been on CPAC. Mm -hmm. And I know Mike Curtis. We didn't leave Jim Reynolds. <laughs> The one that worked for Xerox. Xerox. And Michael Curtis was the one that worked on like Worcester. Was he it? ran a, yeah, the, the air. Like and he was also on the um, he was on the aerospace plane. Yeah. 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 And yeah he same lived company. Worked in Sandwich. Lived in Sandwich. A lot of different yeah. point. To have these choices. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you guys want to wait till next time, just so we can go over the applications one more time. You know, the airport commission would like the member on there because they're right in the middle of their strategic planning, like she was saying, Margaret Margaret was saying. Yeah. Um, and to bring somebody in any later, the commissioners were saying it's difficult for that new individual to, to get it. Yeah. yeah. And 
That's fine with me. Let's go because we push too many of them off, I think. I like Jim Reynolds and I like Margaret. Those are my two. Do so I have, um, there's a one vacancy, and I see on the airport commission Bradley Bailey, Wendy Berth, Berwick, Joe DeGeorge, John Flores, Mark Boyd, and Roman Wheel. I'm unhappy with it being too much. Uh, yeah. uh, um, not going to get anybody else because we have some really good applications. We, but, we I, but I think she knows how this works. It gives it. some so gender balance to the um, to the um, yeah. make up of the commission. I'm good. Does somebody want to make a nomination? I nominate Margaret Neal. Right. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay. All those in favor? Right. Unanimous. By the way, I think it's remarkable that all of all of these candidates today went to the cities. Yeah. Leadership it's a great program. Academy. It's lunacy. It's a great program. Are we Beverly? Yeah. I make a motion to nominate Beverly Park to the Mickey Cultural Counselor Council. <laughs> Second. All those in favor? Aye. Fabulous. Unanimous. All right. Do you want to schedule the next meeting or do you want to next one? Oh, what are we doing about the ZBA? You got to do something about the ZBA. All right. Rodney Tagano, Paul Mazzola, and Natalie Pittinger is who you interviewed. And there's no other person for the ZBA, right? I have not okay. received. I think I was getting the airport confused with the ZBA. Yeah, I have not received. I have one new application here from Marie Rizzo for the Open Space Committee, Kevin McAleese for the Youth Commission as a student, and Sheila Knight put in an application but does not live in the town of Barnstable. She lives in Yarmouth. So that doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> and those 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 are it for applications submitted. Yeah, how many have. openings on ZBA? One. On ZBA? Yeah. Um, no, there's more than one, I believe. There's, what was the question? How many uh, openings on ZBA? Uh, right now. I think it's two because I think there was one. I mean, didn't somebody else see? Okay. Jake Dewey. Let me go get Earth. an accurate. I'll get you an Ramsey. accurate number. Manny Alves, Mark Hansen, Larry Horowitz, Bob Nord. Oh, there's two vacancies. Uh, Aaron Webb. The two vacancies. But what's not clear on the website is whether they are um, associated with Associate, the Yeah, you're right. Thank you. And, and that's one thing I had suggested that if somebody was an associate member, there's two associate member positions as oh. everybody comes on as an associate. So there are no there's full two. member openings. No, I already sent that question up. Thank you. I didn't get anybody that everybody was comfortable with where they were staying because zoning is such a confusing yeah, issue. Yeah, I understood. Somebody, I, I like uh, Tavano. Uh, that's my two cents. I mean, anybody else had the conversation? Well, we have two people, right? Yeah, you need two. Yeah. So, why don't we do all the nominations and then we can vote from there? You want to sign? No. Okay, well, we have one. We want, we three want people it. for two positions. Yeah, you want to do the nominations? Are all three people being nominated or just two people yeah. being nominated? Because if it's two people being nominated, then. All right, well, let's do nominations. I'll nominate Rodney Spano. And I'll nominate Natalie Pinter. Second and both. Any um, nominations for Paul Mazzola? All right, we have a first and a second for Rodney Tavano. All those in favor? Four, what three? Four. I think it was your names. All three. No. And then we had a first and a second for Natalie Pittinger. All those in favor? Okay. 
for those voted, it's Natalie Penninger and Rodney Tavano. So just so I understand the two votes, Harry? I have to ask legal. I think you need at least three. But Councillor Bloom is not here, and he did express um, the last time that he does not have to recuse himself. Yeah. So I don't know if you... Yeah, check, check with legal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I will do that. Somebody want to make a motion for the minutes? Uh, we don't, no. those aren't on the agenda. Well, the only not. reason why they were given to you is because I didn't want you to think I did not complete them, but they'll be on your next agenda. They're for the June. You do a lot of work. The two know. sets of meetings. <laughs> she, she doesn't do enough. <laughs> <laughs> it takes too much. <laughs> Seven days a week. Yeah. 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 Well, the, the nominations that you made, it'll be um, um, Margaret and Beverly, and it'll be the airport commission. And if I find out from legal, we'll list the ZBA. And that'll be on the 10th, October 10th agenda, because we have not posted that yet, so we can get it on as a first read. And then you can act on it on the 24th. Okay, so the ZBA, the question is because we had two people who voted and two people who abstained. That's the question. Yeah. Did I abstain? I'm just curious. <laughs> no, I was just curious. I no, for Natalie, two, two, yeah, two, two people two, voted yes, for Natalie, two the two women, and you didn't raise your hand at all. So I don't think I that's didn't. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. Oh, well, we can we, 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 we vote so. no for that. I can't, I really spaced out during the that's talking okay. about that. I abstained. I did. No, no. I said <laughs> abstain or voted no. Yeah, Meaning, I thought I voted no. Okay. Okay. Did so I? Yes, yeah, voted no. Okay. I'm just really? curious. I'm just curious because we, we have two people we've nominated. Yes. But we, did we, did you, three of us voted for Rodney Tavano. Did you vote no. for Rodney yes. Tavano? Yeah. But yes, then so he you, passes. You voted for Natalie, and then mm -hmm. you voted against Natalie because that's what we did. Mm -hmm. So I have to find out the legal. No, no I just want to have a conversation about we have three candidates. Right. And but nobody else brought Paul Mazzola forward. So we should bring Paul Mazzola forward. I nominate Paul Mazzola to fill the vacant spot. So okay, but I guess I'm just wondering it seems kind of we had an opportunity to vote to nominate all three people, kind of to avoid what's going on now, which is you want my my two cents? I would put this off to your very next meeting until Councillor Bloom can attend. That's a good idea. Because I think legal is going to come back and say the vote didn't carry because it was split. I agree. And I don't have voting rights. I'm just wondering from the two people that I don't nominate. No, 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 I'm not asking you to nominate. Yeah, what I'm saying I don't nominate is, anybody. is that we have three people. We only put two people forward. We have two spots. So I guess I'm wondering why it is that we can't move Natalie Pittenger forward. Because if not, why we didn't why we didn't nominate Paul Mazzola? If you knew you weren't going to vote for Natalie, why didn't you bring Paul Mazzola at that point? I guess I'm just wondering about the map. Like we have to get the seats filled. We've been doing this since February. Right, we filled we one. Don't have they haven't both been open since February. Yeah, but they've both been the open. one that we had originally had Rodney Tavano, Paul Mazzola, mm -hmm. and Natalie Pittenger, mm -hmm. where we did first these interviews in March. But back even into February, actually. Into February. Yeah. So that so, one's filled now. And when did this other one open? Um, it was a few, few about a month ago it opened. So the, but the, I guess I would have like, I guess I would have liked to have had the conversation about which position are we filling first and who would I mean I just feel like it's kind of a little we would fill be, the oldest because we first. voted for for Rodney Tavano first he gets the position and I I mean I'm just like I'm just wondering at what point would we would we want I'm the just I'm wondering what is it about Natalie Pittenger that we can't compromise we put we put the two Tom positions Zola. that are open are for associate positions. Mm -hmm. Nobody goes from that's currently a member down to the associate. There is nobody to move into those positions. Everybody that's already on the ZBA is either a full member or they're an associate. The member positions are not open. It's the associate member positions that are open and there's two of them. So you've got three candidates with two open positions. 
two have been recommended, but only one person carried a split vote. So you can't vote on that until you have a full complement of appointment committee members to push it forward. What you're saying is why won't we vote for Natalie Pittenger, essentially? I'm just wondering <laughs> when we had the opportunity to move Paul, Paul Mazzola, I, I mean, what you're saying is you don't feel Paul Mazzola is a good candidate. Well, I don't feel nobody that he's brought a bad him. candidate. Okay, but nobody, nobody nominated them, so we're going to take him out of the right. So we could just leave that until the next time. I mean, you could, we could, do, we could, do we take him out of the running? Do we say? I mean, well, he wasn't, he wasn't nominated, so that kind of, there's four of us in a room here and nobody nominated him, so I think that would be an indication that He's not a strong candidate. Well, that would be fine. Then. We'll even do that, but it doesn't. But I guess I'm just change. wondering, like, how how much longer we've been waiting since February to fill this position? But you can say that Natalie just has it. Natalie has expressed her interest. She attends lots of meetings in lots of places, and she's here to help us do the work of the town. I thought that we wanted people who are ready to do the work of the town. So I guess I'm just. But wondering, everybody has their own perspective on who they want to vote for. I mean. Right. Right. Just so you, just so you know, <laughs> as chair of this committee, I don't think it's appropriate I nominate anybody. That's how I choose to do my business. Yeah. I so, but that being said, I would have nominated Mazzola. I would. That being said, because I think he's the better candidate. Period. So, it's nothing against Natalie. I think she's a good candidate. But I would have nominated Mazzola. Me personally. That's how I feel. Well, I'm just I'm just guess I'm asking the question because we had three candidates and one didn't get nominated, and then the other candidate got a split vote. So I'm just wondering how that math worked out. Yeah, I just that's, that's question, and it's not and it was it's kind not, of like uh, when are we gonna be able to fill this position? And we've been doing this since February. We have a candidate. But let's not act like this is the first time that this has happened. <laughs> we did the same exact thing before. No. So if people don't want to vote for somebody, they're not just going to vote for them for the sake of voting for somebody. I understand. Um, looking at the members on the um, town's website, for what it's worth, they're all men. I think it gives some gender balance to um, the members of the committee to have a woman on the board. And I did the same for the airport commission to see what's the um, the um, construction. Uh, you know, are we geographically balanced? Are we gender balanced? Are we um, politically balanced as best as possible? So, given that there's only men, and, and and I was the liaison at one time to ZBA, and I noticed it's very male dominated. Okay. I'm, I'm, and this, no, 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 you open up this door. So now this is what I'm going to say. If that's the way you want to look at things, then we need to start looking at all these boards of committees because there's no people of color. There's no LGBTQ. I agree. We can't, we can't do it like that. Yes, it's always good to have balance, but the people have to be qualified at the same time. Understood. Yeah, no, I understand. Okay, so, I mean, you don't want to open up that Pandora box. I hear you. Because then I have a lot of complainers here. Believe me, because there's been a lot of people of color that have come through this room that are immensely qualified and haven't been selected. And I kept my mouth shut. So if you want to start going down that road, we can. I I hear you, and I want to embrace diversity in our in our um, committees. Believe me, we all do. But we have, as a committee, we have never voted on that for that purpose. Under I get it. I but get it. I think Jeff, I I think that. Chris is entitled to her opinion Absolutely. of why she wants somebody on a board. Absolutely. As you are allowed to have your opinion that you think Absolutely. somebody and I'm not saying... LGBTQ should be on the board. So I don't think... My point no, I is... I just feel like you're saying to Chris that she's not allowed to have her opinion. Because... No, that's not what I said to Chris. What I, what I, I, what I said to Chris... Like, what I said to Chris is the same thing I'll say to you. Mm -hmm. Okay? If you want to start using it as a litmus test, that's fine. I don't have any problem with that. But, but we can't all of a sudden start doing that now when we haven't done it this whole time. So we each come to our voting through the experience of learning. Unbelievable. Okay. Well, no, whatever. Jeff? No, no, no. Whatever. Don't get me started on this. Okay, if you're going to ask people point blank, well, why don't you want to vote for somebody? We're going to get into these kind of 
But and Chris is not allowed to say I'd like to vote. Chris is allowed to say anything she wants. That's Chris's opinion. I'd like to. Did I say that? Did I say your opinion is wrong? Did I say that? I got the sense actually that you were trying to say that her opinion was wrong. No, because I happen to agree with her. You just said we should not use that as a witness. We shouldn't stop now. That's what I said. If we're gonna if we're gonna stop using stuff like that as a litmus test. Then we should have started that months ago. Right, you're just a rubber stamp to say, well, we need a woman on this committee. Otherwise, we want to apply. But I think what Chris is saying, one of the reasons she would vote for her is it's because it would be yeah. to. And I can understand. That's that, why I think that's what she's has, saying. The, I but I understand what Jeff's saying. The too, chops for the job, too. I, don't, you know, I understand I, what you're saying because they don't have to. And I happen to agree with Chris. Like, <laughs> I happen to agree with Chris, but, it, but if that's going to be the mission of this committee, then we yeah. should have said it months ago. I, I don't think that Chris is advocating for that as a mission. I think what she's saying is, besides it's an opportunity. Feel she's qualified, also reasons why she'd want to vote for us because she's a woman. That's okay. all. I'm t well, I don't think that's the only women. reason Chris is voting for somebody. I never said I clear. never said that. That's why I never said that. I do think I that we, say you said we that. should take um, um, Cindy's recommendation and wait for the next meeting. Sure thing. We all have our reasons. For it, and I think that I think that the, this is a way for our our committees to grow. I mean, I I went to the one case. Um, 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 seminar, the workshop, and I I noticed that their diversity was absent. You know, it's just I, I attended the the workshops and I went to try to learn about how to make our communities better. And I just said, I, I feel that this is an opportunity to um, improve the diversity on our committees. But um, that said, I realized a two to two vote would not carry and that it would be um, judicious to uh, wait for the next one. What date for our next meeting? Do you think? Whatever your schedule say, you just let me know. I won't be here from the uh... Fifth to the thirteenth. Fifth to the thirteenth. All right, so we're looking at the week of the fourteenth. There's more meetings. Yeah, there is. The <laughs> Sorry, Cindy. No, we that's don't have okay. A lot of ending but, things, do we? I mean, uh, we still have Phil for various The 22nd of October is open. That's wrong, right? Sure. The 22nd. The 22nd. What time, Cindy? Uh, what time is best for everybody? There's a, um, let's see, the Board of Health is in the hearing room. with people who are working that we're not able to make it today. If you can start it at 4, 4.30. That's, that sounds um, like it. Okay. works for the um, We'll start it at 4.30, and that way if somebody gets out at 5, they can, yeah, we'll seems, make it in time. That's been a problem before. That's so good. October 22. Sure. All right. I'm available. I'll be there. Fabulous. <laughs> Fabulous. So October 22nd at 4.30 will be the next meeting, and we'll have the ZBA on there, and hopefully Charlie will be feeling better. Yeah. Poor guy. And then I'll get these other, I'll see if I can get Kevin McAleese in for the Youth Commission on the high school for a student, and Marie Rizzo for the Open Space Committee. Did we have public comment? Oh, is it public comment? We okay. asked. Yeah. We did? I can't remember that. Yeah, I'm sorry. We I asked in the beginning, but there wasn't anybody <laughs> at the beginning of Zoom. I don't want anything. And that. there wasn't anybody here. Larry yes. Warren could not yes. come today. So and um, he's the only are one. we going to be interviewing Chris Beach and Yes, Tim Hamill. I'm going to put them on the next one as well. And I'll let them know that it's a 4 30 meeting. I'm really meeting. impressed that all 13 of us we saw today. Had attended this. Um, yeah, uh, it's a good program. The leadership of Tim French does a great job with that. Move to adjourn. Okay. All those in favor? You are adjourned. Thank you.